Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to talk about more trigonometric equations. So in this video we're going to talk about how to solve trigonometric equations using fundamental identities. So we're going to solve trigonometric equations first by using trigonometric identities to simplify the equation. In the next video we'll talk about how to solve trigonometric equations in which the terms contain multiple angles as solutions. So let's talk about solving trigonometric equations by using identities. In the next two examples we're going to use trigonometric identities to solve a trigonometric equation in a form in which it can be factored. So example one, using a trigonometric identity, solve the following trigonometric equations and list all solutions. So we'll actually have the general form for the solution of the equation. So number one, we're gonna solve the equation, one plus sine of theta is equal to two times cosine squared of theta. So notice you have two different trigonometric functions involved in this equation. You have the sine function and you also have the cosine function. However, the cosine function is squared, however, the sine function is not. What we're going to do is that since the sine function is being raised to the first power, we're going to replace the cosine squared function to be in terms of the sine squared function. So let's replace cosine squared of theta to be in terms of the sine of theta using the Pythagorean identity. So recall, the Pythagorean identity said sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. If you take this equation and solve for cosine squared of theta, you'll have cosine squared of theta is equal to one subtract sine squared of theta. And so let's replace the right side of the equation, two times cosine squared of theta with two times the quantity, one subtract sine squared of theta. So the left side of the equation will stay the same, one plus sine of theta, but the right side of the equation will be replaced with two times one subtract sine squared of theta using the Pythagorean identity. Since we're replacing cosine squared of theta, we have to replace cosine squared of theta with one subtract sine squared of theta in parentheses. That way you distribute the two to the one and also to the negative sine squared of theta. So the left side of the equation will be one plus sine of theta. The right side of the equation will be two subtract two times sine squared of theta. Now that we have the entire equation in terms of the sine function, we have a sine function that's raised to the first power, but we also have sine that's being raised to the second power. Let's move all the terms to one side of the equation so that one side of the equation is equal to zero. So let's add two sine squared of theta to the left side of the equation and also subtract two to the left side of the equation. So when you do that, you'll have two times sine squared of theta, that's positive two times sine squared of theta because we added two sine squared of theta to the left side of the equation plus sine of theta is also on the left side of the equation already. And then we take one subtract two, we'll get negative one. So the left side of the equation will be two times sine squared of theta plus sine of theta subtract one. And the right side of the equation will just be zero because we move all the terms on the equation on the left side. So now an equation of this form we've talked about in the previous video. This is actually a trigonometric equation that's quadratic in form. Notice if we let u is equal to sine of theta, then the equation two times sine squared of theta plus sine of theta subtract one equals zero will become the equation two times u squared because u is equal to sine of theta plus u subtract one is equal to zero. And so this becomes a quadratic equation. And so the trigonometric equation is quadratic type. So now we need to solve the quadratic equation, 2u squared plus u subtract 1 equals 0. We'll use the AC method, or you can use trial and error. We find out that 2u squared plus u subtract 1 is equal to 0. We'll factor as the quantity 2u subtract 1 is one of the factors, and the other factor is u plus 1. So 2u subtract 1 times u plus 1 is equal to 0. That means at least one of the factors is equal to 0. So that means 2u minus 1 is equal to 0, or u plus 1 is equal to 0, the other factor. So now let's solve for the variable u in each of these resulting equations. u is equal to positive 1 half because 2u subtract 1 equals 0. And if u plus 1 is equal to 0, that means u equals negative 1. So we have the solutions u equals 1 half and also u equals negative 1. However, we were not solving the equation for u. The original equation was in terms of the variable theta. We're trying to find out what are the values of theta that will make the equation a true statement. So we actually have u is equal to 1 half. That means u was sine of theta, that sine of theta is one half. And if u equals negative one, that means sine of theta is negative one. So now we can solve these basic trigonometric equations. Sine of theta will be one half in both quadrants one and two. So the angle that's in quadrant one where sine of theta is one half is the angle pi over three. So theta can be pi over three plus some multiple of two pi. So theta can be pi over three plus two pi k, where k is an integer. Or if you're talking about the angle that's in quadrant two, where the sine of theta is one half, that's the angle two pi divided by three. So theta can be two pi over three plus some multiple of two pi. So theta is two pi over three plus two pi k, where k is an integer. And whenever sine of theta is equal to negative one, that only involves the angle three pi divided by two. So theta can be three pi over two plus again, some multiple of two pi. So theta can be three pi over two plus two pi k, where k is an integer. If you have an angle of any of these three different forms, 
you actually have a solution to the equation 1 plus sine of theta is equal to 2 times cosine squared of theta. And so this is what's called the general solution to the trigonometric equation. Let's try another one. Number two, we have the equation sine of 2 theta subtract cosine of theta is equal to zero. Well, notice we have sine of 2 theta. That's actually a sine function involving a double angle. Let's use the double angle formula for the sine function to rewrite this. So if you remember, the double angle formula for the sine function, sine of 2 theta was equal to 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So let's replace sine of 2 theta with 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. And we also have subtract cosine of theta already part of the equation on the left hand side. And the right side of the equation is already zero. So we have two times sine of theta times cosine of theta, subtract so cosine of theta is equal to zero. Notice that both of these terms have cosine of theta in common. So that's the greatest common factor or GCF. We can factor out cosine of theta from both terms. And so cosine of theta factored out, you'll have a two times sine of theta from the first term left over. And if you factor out cosine of theta from cosine of theta, that will give you a negative one left. So you have cosine of theta times a quantity, two times sine of theta subtract one, and the right side of the equation is equal to zero. So now the left side of the equation has been factored and the right side is zero. So a product is equal to zero if at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So it means cosine of theta is equal to zero or the other factor, two times sine of theta subtract one is equal to zero. So now you have these two resulting equations to solve for theta. You have cosine of theta is equal to zero or sine of theta is equal to positive one half. So we have these two equations that we need to solve for theta. So when cosine of theta is equal to zero, that only involves the angle pi over two and also three pi over two. So theta can be pi over two plus some multiple of two pi because that's the period of the cosine function. So theta can be pi over two plus two pi k where k is an integer. And also theta can be three pi over two plus some multiple of two pi. So theta can be three pi over two plus two pi k where k is an integer. That will solve the equation cosine of theta is equal to zero. And we've already solved the equation sine of theta is equal to one half. That was the angle in quadrant one or two. The angle in quadrant one is theta equals pi over three plus some multiple of two pi. So theta can be pi over three plus two pi k, where k is an integer. Or the angle in quadrant two is theta can be two pi over three plus some multiple of two pi. So you can have theta is equal to two pi over three plus two pi k, where k is an integer. So that will solve the equation sine of theta is equal to one half. And so any angle of these four different forms will actually be a solution to the equation sine of two times theta subtract so cosine of theta is equal to zero. This is the general solution to the trigonometric equation. Number three, we're gonna solve the equation sine squared of theta subtract so sine of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta. So again, you have two different trigonometric functions involved in this equation. You have sine of theta and also cosine of theta. Notice that the only term that involves the linear factor was the sine function. It's just sine to the first power of theta. Let's replace cosine squared of theta to be in terms of sine of theta again, just like we did in the first problem of this video. So we're gonna replace cosine squared of theta with one subtract sine squared of theta because we're gonna use the Pythagorean identity again. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. So that means cosine squared of theta is one subtract sine squared of theta. So let's replace cosine squared of theta on the right hand side of the equation with one subtract sine squared of theta. The left side of the equation will stay the same. It'll stay sine squared of theta subtract sine of theta, but the right side of the equation will now be in terms of the sine function will be one subtract sine squared of theta. So now that we have the entire equation in terms of the sine function, we can actually rewrite this to have all the terms on one side of the equation. So that the other side of the equation will be zero. So let's add sine squared of theta to the left side of the equation. You have sine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. There'll be two sine squared of theta. Subtract sine of theta. That was already on the left-hand side of the equation. And then subtract one to the left side of the equation. You have subtract one and the right side of the equation will now be zero. So it looks like we have an equation that's quadratic type again. If we let u equal sine of theta, then two times sine squared of theta will become two u squared. If we let u equal sine of theta, then the middle term will become minus u, and then the subtract one will stay subtract one, and the right side of the equation will still be zero. So we have two u squared subtract u subtract one is equal to zero. This becomes a quadratic equation, and so the equation two times sine squared of theta subtract sine of theta subtract one equals zero, that's a trigonometric equation that's quadratic type. So now we're gonna solve the quadratic equation two u squared subtract u subtract one equals zero using factoring, the AC method or trial and error. So two u squared subtract u subtract one equals zero, the left-hand side will now factor as two u plus one is one of the factors, and the other factor is u subtract one, because you have two u times u will give you two u squared, you have one times negative one will give you the negative one, and when you take the middle two terms, the outside and the inside will actually give you negative u. You have two u times negative one, that's negative two u, and then one times u will give you u, so negative two u plus u will give you negative u, which is the middle term. So now you have the factored form, 
If you have a factored form that's equal to zero, one of the factors, at least one of the factors, must be zero. So 2u plus 1 equals zero, or the other factor, u subtract 1 equals zero. So now you can solve the equations for u. u is equal to negative 1 half, because 2u plus 1 equals zero will give you u equals negative 1 half, and u subtract 1 equals zero gives you u equals 1. However, again, we're not solving the equation for u. We're trying to solve the equation for theta. The original equation was sine squared of theta subtract sine of theta equals cosine squared of theta. We're trying to find out what are the values of theta that will make this equation a true statement. So let's go back and replace the u with sine of theta. So sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half or sine of theta is equal to 1. If sine of theta is negative 1 half, that means the angle must be in quadrant 3 or 4 because the sine is actually a negative number. And so the angle that's in quadrant 3 will actually be the angle theta is 4 pi divided by 3. And so theta can be 4 pi over 3 plus some multiple of 2 pi because that's the period of the sine function. So theta can be 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k where k is an integer or the angle in quadrant 4 would be 5 pi over 3. So theta can be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k where k is an integer. That will solve the equation sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. However, we also need to solve the equation sine of theta is equal to 1. Well, this only occurs at one place on the unit circle. It's when the angle is pi over 2. So theta can be pi over 2 plus some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. If you have an angle of any of these three different forms, it actually will be a general solution to the trigonometric equation sine squared of theta subtract sine of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta. Let's take a look at number 4. This time we're going to solve the equation sine squared of theta plus cosine of theta is equal to 3. Notice that this time you have the sine function and you also have the cosine function involved. However, the cosine function is what's being raised to the first power this time. It's a linear term. And so we're going to replace sine squared of theta to be in terms of cosine squared of theta this time. So again, use a Pythagorean identity. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. If you want to replace the sine squared of theta, you need to solve for sine squared of theta in the Pythagorean identity. So sine squared of theta will be 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. That will become sine squared of theta. So sine squared of theta will be 1 subtract cosine squared of theta using the Pythagorean identity plus cosine of theta will stay as it is and in the right side of the equation will just stay 3. Now the reason why we replace sine squared of theta to be in terms of cosine squared of theta is now the entire equation is involving just cosine of theta. So let's move all the terms to one side of the equation so we can have one side of the equation equal to 0. So we'll add cosine squared of theta to the right side of the equation and also subtract cosine of theta to the right side of the equation and also subtract 1 to the right side of the equation. So you have cosine squared of theta. After you add cosine squared of theta to the right side, you have subtract cosine of theta, and then you'll have 1 subtract 3, and that will give you negative 2. And the right side of the equation will be 0. So it looks like if you let u be cosine of theta, then cosine squared of theta subtract cosine of theta subtract 2 equals 0 will become the equation u squared subtract u subtract 2 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation that we're going to solve for u, which means that the trigonometric equation cosine squared of theta subtract cosine of theta subtract 2 equals 0 was a trigonometric equation of quadratic type. So now we're going to solve the equation u squared subtract u subtract 2 equals 0 using factoring. We want to find out two numbers that multiply to negative 2, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 1, which is the middle term. So the two numbers at work are negative 2 and also positive 1. So you have u squared subtract u subtract 2 equals 0 will become u subtract 2 is one of the factors, and the other factor is u plus 1, and the right side of the equation is equal to 0. So now if the product is equal to 0, at least one of the factors must be 0, so that means u minus 2 equals 0, or u plus 1 equals 0, so that gives you the solutions u equals 2 or u equals negative 1 after you solve for u. So now let's go back and replace the u with cosine of theta because that's what we replaced cosine of theta with. It was just u. So that means cosine of theta is equal to 2 because u equals 2. Or if u equals negative 1, that means cosine of theta is negative 1. Keep in mind that cosine of theta cannot be equal to 2. That's impossible because the cosine function is always between the values, the output values, negative 1 and positive 1, including the endpoints. And so cosine will never be an output value of 2. So that has no solution. However, if cosine of theta is equal to negative 1, in terms of the unit circle, theta must be equal to pi. So theta can be pi plus some multiple of 2 pi, because that's the period of the cosine function. So theta can be pi plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. This is the general solution to the trigonometric equation. The angle theta must be of the form pi plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. To solve the equation, sine squared of theta plus cosine of theta is equal to 3. So let's finish up with one more. Number 5, let's solve the equation 3 times secant squared of theta subtract 2 times tangent squared of theta subtract 4 is equal to 0. This time we have two different trigonometric functions, the secant function and also the tangent function. Keep in mind that there was a Pythagorean identity that actually related secant squared and also tangent squared of theta. So tangent squared of theta plus 1 is actually equal to secant squared of theta. So we're going to use this identity to actually replace secant squared of theta in the equation so that the entire equation is involving the tangent function. 
So 3 times secant squared of theta will become 3 times the quantity tangent squared of theta plus 1. So let's replace that in parentheses. It'll be 3 times the quantity tangent squared of theta plus 1. We'll keep the other terms exactly the same. Subtract 2 times tangent squared of theta, subtract 4, and the right side of the equation is already 0. So we need to simplify by distributing the 3 through the parentheses. We have 3 times tangent squared of theta. That will be 3 tangent squared of theta. 3 times 1 will give us 3. Subtract 2 times tangent squared of theta. Subtract 4. And the right side of the equation will be 0. So if you combine like terms, you have 3 tangent squared of theta. Subtract 2 tangent squared of theta. That's 1 tangent squared of theta. So 1 tangent squared of theta. And then you have plus 3. Subtract 4. That's negative 1. And the right side of the equation is 0. Well, if you add 1 to the right side of the equation, you have tangent squared of theta is equal to positive 1. And now you can take the square root on both sides of the equation to get tangent of theta by itself, but you have to remember the plus or minus on the right side of the equation because you use the square root to cancel out the square power. So tangent squared of theta is equal to 1 means tangent of theta is equal to plus or minus square root of 1, which is equal to 1. So tangent of theta is equal to plus or minus 1. So we have two different equations to solve. We have tangent of theta is equal to positive 1 or tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. Tangent is actually a positive value in quadrants 1 or 3. So the angle where tangent is equal to 1 would be the angle pi over 4. So theta can be pi over 4 plus pi times k because the period of the tangent function is pi, not 2 pi like sine and cosine. So theta can be pi over 4 plus some multiple of pi, so pi times k, where k is an integer. That will take care of the angles that's in quadrants 1 and 3 where tangent of theta is equal to 1. And where tangent of theta is equal to negative 1, tangent is actually a negative value in quadrants 2 and 4. And so the angle that's in quadrant 2 where tangent would be negative 1 would be the angle 3 pi over 4. So theta could be 3 pi over 4 plus pi times k, some multiple of pi, where k is an integer. This will take care of all the angles that are in quadrants 2 and 4 where tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. And so this is a general solution to the trigonometric equation. 3 times secant squared of theta subtract 2 times tangent squared of theta subtract 4 equals 0. The angle must be of the form pi over 4 plus pi k or 3 pi over 4 plus pi k where k is an integer. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about how to solve trigonometric equations using identities. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about solving equations with trigonometric functions of multiples of angles.